guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today's video is going to be five common mistakes that business owners can make. Um, so before we get into this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up. Make sure to click the subscribe button and let's get right into it. Okay guys, so the first mistake that I want to go over is not wearing your own product, okay? And when I give advice, it's not just for people starting hair businesses, but I try to make it in a way that can help anyone, no matter what business you're going into or what business you run. Um, or what type of field you're in. So not wearing your product, not advertising your product. So, you know, if you're selling hair, you're not wearing your hair. I think that's a huge mistake because you're going to be your biggest promoter. There's gonna be times that I don't even wear my hair and there's gonna be times that, you know, you're not going to always wear your product, but you have to make sure that you're constantly advertising. So even if I'm not wearing my hair, if I'm going to an event or if I'm going to an area that's going to be heavily populated, me wearing a sweatshirt with my company's name on it will be beneficial. Um, me having business cards will be beneficial. Just pretty much always promoting your brand. So I think one of the mistakes is just not, you know, promoting your brand enough, not wearing your product, not really having any other um, items to take with you. And granted, there's going to be times where you're not going to be wearing your, your um, product. There's times that I don't wear my hair. Um, but if you're going to a place that's going to be very heavily populated, it's going to be very beneficial for you to make sure that you have some type of promo wear. You know what I mean? Like whether it's a sweatshirt, whether it's a bag or, you know, whatever it may be, just something that represents your brand so that people, if they look at you, um, they can already know pretty much what you're promoting um, or if they see your hair like I, I stress this in a lot of videos it's a great way to attract people to you by wearing your own product especially if you um, are really good at doing hair or if you have a really really good stylist you know get your hair done really really nice and go somewhere and get some people to give you compliments and that's just a great way to attract more business so Definitely one of the mistakes is not promoting yourself enough. So make sure that you are wearing and investing in more branding material for your business. The second mistake that I'm gonna to go to is pricing of your product. So a lot of people struggle with this. I get a lot of questions about, you know, what price should I price my products? And it's a more difficult question than just to say, you know, price it at this percentage or price it at this percentage. Ultimately, I tell you guys to figure out what your goal is, what your, um, how much you're purchasing the hair for or your inventory for, how much typically the hair sells for, and then ultimately what makes sense for your business. You know what I mean? You cannot just match your rates across the board with everybody. Um, I don't try to be just the lowest and I don't try to be the, the highest. Um, so you have to figure out a price point that works based on your brand and the customer, customer service that you're providing and the quality of um, a product that you're offering. So you kind of have to figure that out. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, one mistake is pricing your products too low because I know even when I started, I was just so focused on just being the cheapest around. But once it was all said and done, I really didn't make a profit. I had maybe what, maybe $5 out of you know the whole profit so I'm, I'm five dollars you know was all that I got so all of the um, time that I you know all the emails that I went back and forth with the customer and the time that it took me to package the hair up to inspect the hair the time that it took me to go to the post office wait in line the gas that it took me to drive to the post office pretty much after all that said and done all I made was five bucks and there would be some times that I would price my products and I wouldn't even get a profit I would actually come out of pocket so, you know, I figured really early on that I cannot be the cheapest around. You definitely have to make sure that the pricing is gonna work both ways, that it's enough to actually keep your business going and thriving, but it's still not at a price point where it's going to take you out of business, meaning no one's gonna purchase based on how high it is. So you don't wanna high rack at your prices, but you don't wanna be too low either. You have to find that happy medium that works best for your business, your product, and your service, the service that you're providing. So I would definitely say that one of the huge mistakes is pricing your products, from my experience, too low and just not getting anything out of it. Um, the third mistake that I'm going to point out is being too nervous to put yourself out there. Um, and I can attest to this one too. If you know me personally, I'm someone, I don't wanna say I'm not outgoing because I am, but I'm really not, I mean, I wouldn't just, I'm not the life of the party. You know, I'm not the loudest person there. And I do get shy and I do get nervous a lot. And um, 
it was very nerve nerve wracking for me just the thought of me putting myself out there the thought of me putting pictures on a website and having people go and look at those pictures or putting pictures on social media or even doing different interviews or being in a magazine but these are the type of things that come along with what you're wanting to do. Um, these are the things that come along with being an entrepreneur, a business owner. So you're going to have to just overcome your fears. And even if you are scared, you still have to do it. You still have to work while you're while you're fear, fearful, while you're scared. You know, I may not want to do something, but if I know that this is something that's necessary for me to do, for me to move forward, it's kind of like I don't have a choice. So I think another mistake that a lot of business owners make is just hesitating too much because they're just so nervous about putting themselves out there. They're so nervous about what people are going to say, what they're going to think. And to an extent, you know, you're just going to have to kind of put those thoughts in the back burner and just do you and put yourself out there because you'll never know if you don't do it. Hold on real quick. Welcome back to my case. Please order when you're ready. Hi, may I have a... Um, all right guys so i'm human i have to get something to eat too and i don't want to get off of my posting schedule so i'm going to be posting i mean i'm going to be recording whenever i find time um so i'm in the kfc's drive through and i'm still recording okay so we left off on number three a lot of people being too nervous to put themselves out there and really you know your fear can really stop you from going a lot of places in life and being your ultimate best and so you know it's not so much of just making sure that you're not scared anymore, but it's just learning how to, um, okay guys, I'm back home right now. So, um, it's more so just learning how to work while you're in fear. You know what I mean? Work still while you're nervous. I have a lot of anxiety and I'll be the first one to say that sometimes I just try to make sure that I'm not nervous. I try to make sure that I'm not anxious about doing anything and it can be something as small as, you know, posting a picture or it can be something you know say you're putting on an event and the event can be circled around you and it can be circled around your your brand but it, you still may be nervous and you're like why the heck am I nervous you know I'm this is a, an event that I put on or this is an event for my, my brand why am I nervous but you know sometimes you just can't get over the jitters sometimes you just can't get out the butterflies out of your stomach and you just have to learn how to work within your fear like i'm still nervous i'm still scared to do this but i'm going to do it still you know what i mean like you still just have to go through it you still just have to push through and that's one of the things that i think a lot of people make a mistake by not doing you know they just you know try to even me i've tried to just sit back and i'm like you know what i'm not gonna i'm gonna postpone it i'm not gonna do it this month i'm not gonna do it now because i just i feel too nervous but we have to learn how to work still even when we're nervous, even when we're scared, if it's something that's good, if we know that, okay, this is going to take me to the next level, this is something that is ethical, this is something that I need to do, we need to learn how to push past and still do it even though we're scared or nervous. Um, the fourth tip that I have is talking bad about another company or vendor. I, I hear this way too too often, you know what I mean? And the, I just feel that there's no need to down anyone else to lift yourself up. Have you ever been to the nail shop? And let me just tell you a quick story. My nails are very thick. I have thick nail beds. So no matter who I go to, my nails are always going to turn out looking thick because, you know, to start off with, my natural nails are thick and my nail beds have like a curve in them. So no matter who I go to, my nails look thick. So I, I would go to other nail shops that I hadn't. Like if I go to a nail shop for the first time, a lot of nail technicians will look at my nails and say, oh my God, where did you go? And I'll tell them, oh, well, that place, they did your nails way too thick. This is why you shouldn't go there. They didn't do this. This is why your nail lifted because they didn't do this. And this place, you know, I, I get a lot of people from them and they say they don't like this place because of this. And, and it's just like, to an extent, I understand that you're trying to promote your business. I understand that you're trying to tell me, you know, I should come to you. But you don't have to sell me by downing someone else. Like you don't have to sell um, on how well you are in comparison to someone else. Your your quality really speaks for itself. Your customer service speaks for itself. You can always build your brand up and talk highly of your brand without putting someone else down. So I think a lot of people make the mistake, especially new business owners, of downing someone else. You know, well, I wouldn't shop with her because I was told that her hair is this. Or I wouldn't shop with her because she's this, she's that. When it's like, it's, it's unnecessary. It's just a dirty way to play the game. As business owners, we all should have respect for everyone in this field because we're all trying. We're all, you know, on, on the business side. And it's just like, I'm not going to down anyone else. I don't want you down in me. You know, I just want to make sure that we're all speaking highly. If you're not going to speak highly of a certain company, just don't mention them. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to bring someone else down to build yourselves up. So I would just say that's my fourth tip, you know, 
fourth mistake that a lot of people make is just talking bad about another person in the same industry or talking bad about another business in the same field. Like you don't have to do that. And then, um, you know, it also in return makes a lot of customers look at you a little bit different, you know, like why does she feel the need to hate or why does she feel the need? You know, it just gets really, really messy on your business and you don't want that. So stay away from that. The last and fifth tip that I have is reinvesting. Once you start getting a rhythm with your business, once you start actually seeing, um, you know, orders and you actually find a price that works well for your customers, for your business, and you start seeing your profit, it's a great, amazing feeling. And you're like, let's go celebrate. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to buy myself something. And I'm the first one to say, treat yourself. I definitely treat myself. But you also have to keep in mind that you have to reinvest back into the business. Just because you had a great week, a great month, does not mean that it's going to be the exact same next month. So you always have to make sure that you have some kind of money in that business pot, in that business account. I know a few videos ago, I talked about the importance of having a separate business account and the important of ma importance of making sure that you keep your money separate. So it just goes back to that. Make sure that you do keep your business money separate, even if you're wanting to celebrate if you honestly don't have enough, don't do it at that point. Even if you have enough, you know, still think about it. Like, okay, what am I doing next month? Do I have any, you know, do I have enough money left in the savings for my business in case I get any other opportunities? Like I told you guys, there may be opportunities that come in your life. I talked about this in one of my prior videos as well, but there may be opportunities to brand yourself, to market yourself. And in order to get to the event, you may need financing or you may need money. You may need money for a rental. You may need money for a flight. You may need money for gas. You may need money to um, secure a spot in a magazine or in a blog or any place or advertise with a certain company or with a certain event. And you want to make sure that you always have the funds available to do that. So before you just go and not, you know, reinvest or before, you know, we get too excited and forget, you know, that, hey, I do need this money for other purposes, even though I may not know today exactly what I need the money for. It's always good to have money available for your business because money gives you freedom. It gives you other opportunities. Um, and you just want to be ready if anything comes along that can benefit you and your brand. So you guys, I really hope these tips help. If you have any questions, like always, please be sure to leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.